Hello again everyone, Vanguard of Valor here. Welcome back to another episode of FTL here in Advanced Edition on board the uh, Stealth Cruiser Type C, the VSS High Noon with Desperado, Bronco, and Rustler. Unfortunately for us, this ship has been a bit of a disaster so far with no shield system or any other way to protect yourself apart from a shield overcharger drone. It's been a bit difficult. We're down to less than a third of our hull already. We're looking for a store somewhere on the map. Hopefully we can find one soon. And we'll see what we can get. First jump, however, leads to a remarkable binary star system with a beautiful view, but nothing else around. Well, that's not a great start, but there is a store over here. Please have a shield system on board. If we can't get shields soon, we are going to die a very depressing death. So, we find there's only one other ship at this beacon. It's showing heavy damage. We receive a message on our console. Greetings, traveler. We were crippled by a band of pirates and are now forced to sell our remaining valuable equipment to acquire the necessary supplies to get home. Do you have a shield system? You do. Oh, thank goodness. 125 scrap for that is pretty expensive, but at least it means we don't die. They don't have another uh, page either, so we can't do much else, but we will sell them our systems here to get more money and hopefully keep ourselves alive and upgrade our shields to level 2 to make ourselves less vulnerable to everything we're undoubtedly going to be fighting here. We're probably going to keep the long-range scanners still, but we'll sell the backup DNA bank and the breach missiles and the anti-drone because it's terrible, and we'll keep the shield overcharger maybe? No, we're not. We're selling that too. So, we're selling all that junk and see if we can actually make this ship do something decent. We could buy cloaking, which would be actually be pretty cool. But I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to use this to power up the systems we currently have, make ourselves a little bit less vulnerable, because otherwise we can't do much. We will power ourselves up to half hull, though, so we're not immediately going to die either. So with 151 scrap, we can power ourselves up to have level 2 shields like so. Next on our agenda is powering up our weapons. There we go. That was actually really convenient. We had just enough to sell to bring ourselves up to level 2 shields. So now we're not instantly dead every time we fight something. But the fact is that we're really underpowered for the difficulty of the... Oh, there's a story over there too, jerks. We're really underpowered for the difficulty of where we're at now, so the odds of us being able to do much is basically gone. A transmission from the nearby planet indicates an outpost below which offers supplies to travelers. We send down an away party to check it out, and these guys have some interesting things. An explosive replicator, which gives you a chance of not using missiles. Advanced FTL navigation, some other systems like sensors, which would be quite nice. I didn't even notice we didn't have sensors to begin with. Ugh, terrible. And some decent drones, but we can't afford anything anyway, so we're just going to buy nothing. And we're going to jump onwards and hopefully get something out of this sector before we run out of space. So, next jump. This beacon serves as a meeting place for local traffic, and it seems we can find crew willing to fight in our ship here for a price. We have no money, so that's actually awful. Let's jump over this way and see if we can get something out of this sector. There's a lot of nebula beacons, so I might jump into them and see if we can get something. Nothing here either. This beacon has been built for a nearby civilian space station, and no one hails our ship. Well, this is not looking good for us. Every beacon here is empty. What is this all about? A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before we have time to make contact with them, they fade away into the nebula, but thankfully we have a long-range scanner, so we can power up our sensors and try and track them. Our local radar flickers periodically, showing signs of a large object in the clouds nearby. However, it's enough to get coordinates when we find the ship. An empty hull, long since stripped of functioning components, giving us 25 scrap. That'll let us power up our weapons to power 3, which is good enough to get the charge laser and the charge ion online, which isn't an amazing combo, but it's better than nothing if we can't get through their defenses. We're going to power up the weapons anyway, because the weapons are what we absolutely need right now. And we're going to look for more loot here in the nebula. It's got to be something we can get. We arrive in the nebula and immediately receive a message from an unknown source. Prepare to be boarded! With a static from our nebula, there's no way to tell where they came from. We hear shots fired on board ship. Well, that's bad news. Four humans right now, and they're in our door control already, is pretty awful. So, we don't have a med bay or anything. We're just going to start venting this ship, because otherwise we're going to die. Start the venting. Now we're going to close this door and get our crew back in here. Hopefully the air vents out quickly, and they already went back in the doors. All right, keep venting the doors. Not much I can do about any of this stuff. We just have to keep trying to vent them out into other rooms. We're going to get our rock man back here to help defend, because otherwise we're going to be in trouble. Now we close the door room. Get you in there, friend. Activate those stronger doors so we can help maybe suffocate them before we die a horrible death. Get ourselves in here. Vent all these rooms. There we go. We're just trying to defend until these rooms have no air left in them. Then we can run away and hopefully keep suffocating them. Alright, run guys into the drone control. They're going to follow you, unfortunately, which is not great, but it's better than nothing. We're going to run over in this direction. The O2 is still turned on, which is a interesting detriment to this plan, actually, but... Vent those doors. Keep venting. There we go. Now the crew's trying to go elsewhere, which is fine. They should start suffocating to death soon. Two of them are dead. Good. 
And these two are going to be gone from this world very shortly. There we go. Okay, close all the doors. What a disaster that was. All right, let our air slowly come back online. And let's go into the engines to repair them back up again. All right, well, we have shields now. Unfortunately, we don't have any way of dealing with borders yet. We can't afford to upgrade our doors at the moment because really... We kind of need to deal with weapons, otherwise we're not going to be able to kill anything we fight. We've had really bad luck in this sector, too. We've had almost all of our beacons have been beacons with no benefits to us at all in them. So, yeah, we're going to let our oxygen regenerate here, and then we'll be back again momentarily. All right, we have air back again. Let's see if we can turn our luck around here a little bit. We have a beacon over here we can jump to, which will let us get back on track here. Otherwise, we can go all the way around. I think we're going to go all the way around, though, just to see if some of these beacons let us get something free, because we really need something. We receive a message from a small convoy. They're looking for some military supplies and are offering to try and improve our reactor in exchange. Well, I wouldn't mind getting a free reactor upgrade, but free does not include a third of our fuel, so we're going to have to respectfully decline, needing what supplies we have. And that continues our streak of nothing in this sector at all. All right, Desperado, Bronco, and Rustler, let's see. We recognize this ship as one well slave trader. He hails us, offering us laborers for cheap. Let's attack that slaver scum and see if we can maybe survive his onslaught. He has a pretty powerful arsenal, but if we get lucky here, he shouldn't be able to do too much to us. We're going to charge up the charge ion, which should hopefully take out that uh, Zoltan shield pretty quickly. And we'll do what we need to do. So, let's fire in two shots from our charge. Not only one shot, I've waited a second too little. Take damage in the oxygen, of course, because who needs to breathe, right? Let's go fix up that O2, and then we'll fire the charge ion at them and hopefully knock out their shields this time. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Charge laser in the weapons to knock out some of that firepower. There we go. Only hit out one of the weapons, which is unfortunately the one that just fired. But at least the O2 should be back online now. There we go. And they shouldn't be able to hurt us at the moment. So that's good news. Fire the charge ion back into those shields again. And we'll get the charge laser ready to hit the weapons again and hopefully take them out again. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Take that firepower down. We need to be able to hurt these people. And this should let us do it. All right, charge laser, you're going to go for the helm this time. I want to try and lock these guys down so they can't run. Fantastic. They're trying to offer us a slave, Brecken, the combat NG, as an exchange. Well, I wouldn't, man wouldn't mind having another crew, and an NG is a pretty good offer at that. We really need some more money, so surrender is not an option. If we can't get any money out of this sector, we're going to lose regardless, so we're going to have to take what we can get here. Going to have to take what we can get. Drop some more charge lasers on them since they have no shields up at this point. And we should be okay now to kill them in another two shots. Unless they get really lucky with their evasion all of a sudden. They decided to prioritize the med bay really highly for some reason. And charge laser for the death. There we go. Pirate fighter goes down. Fantastic. So, slave ship is destroyed. They will continue the evil trade. Many lives were probably lost on that ship. Giving us one fuel, one missile, and 28 scrap. Well... Not quite enough to buy another level weapon control, but we're in a pretty good spot right now, so let's keep jumping and see if we can maybe turn this around. We're in a pretty good spot. We're in a terrible position right now, but we'll see what happens. We spawn a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to be refitted for transport rather than combat and doesn't want to engage us or our ship. We're going to have to demand this surrender their goods. We're prepared to try and secure their cargo by force and see what happens. They don't want to fight and are trying to escape. Thankfully, their weapons aren't that dangerous. I might actually go for the mini beam strategy here because charge ion's a little bit slow. But then again, we only need one ion shot to knock those shields down and then our charge lasers can basically wreak havoc on them, which is exactly what we want. They are going to be trying to board us again, which sucks. But if we want to board our pilot, I'm okay with that. He should be able to handle himself. So, let's fire a shot in there. Good. Charge laser. Please knock out that helm in a second. I'll wait for you to charge up both your shots. There we go. There's a miss, but at least the second one was able to knock him out. Now, if we can keep the charge ion knocking out those shields, we'll be able to aim for the weapons next, which should cause them to prioritize down there. Then we'll go for the engines, which should cause them to prioritize again. Shields might be a better choice, though. One more shot of damage in there will make them definitely go and think of other things. This should work pretty well. There we go. Our pilot's very low on health, but Bronco's doing okay still, which is why I wasn't too worried about him fighting the guy over there. We're going to hit them again in a second in the weapons, just to make sure that they're really concerned about their repairs. And that should make this guy go down here to repair instead of boarding us again when he gets the opportunity. There we go. We're going to hit the engines again to make sure they can't run if they manage to fix another system. Keep messing them up here with the charge lasers. The nice thing about this thing is that since it fires so quickly when the shields are down, you can really take advantage of it. And here they are. They've boarded us again in the door control, unfortunately, this time, which is a little bit annoying. We're going to send our crew to go deal with them. Slows us down a little bit, which means they have a better chance of being able to recharge their systems. But we should be able to keep dealing some damage to them, keeping them basically locked down. The biggest risk we have here is just getting them to 
organize themselves and actually escape before we can stop them. However, I don't think it's going to happen. This crew looks pretty dead this time with that outnumbering thing going on there. Send our crew back to their stations. They've got one hull left, no shields. They've only got two crew. The odds of them escaping now are basically none, so we're in a pretty good spot. There goes our little fighter. Okay. Debris implies the ship was carrying drone schematics, but unfortunately nothing remains. We get one drone part and 17 scrap, though. That's better than nothing. We're going to power this up, which lets us actually use all of our weapons at the same time, if we put some power in there. That'll be good news. That'll definitely help us out here. And let's keep moving. We can jump into this nebula beacon and fight something, so let's go do that and see what else we can get from this sector before we're forced out. The tangled wrecks of many ships wait in dormancy here. We see lights flicker what looks like debris, and Rebel Scout bursts from the wreckage. And that is nasty. They have a halberd beam in there already. Halberd beam, ion, and a laser. That is a nasty combo. Holy cow. Let's turn off the O2 to boost up our evasion. We want to try and dodge as much of this damage as we possibly can. We're going to try and knock out those weapons quickly, but if that ion hits us, thank goodness it does not. So we say if that ion hits us, we could be in some serious trouble. Thankfully, we have a good opportunity to knock their shields out here with the charge ions. Let's fire those shots in there. Well, never mind. We missed two of our shots, but we're going to try and knock out the weapons anyway with the mini beam. Come on now. Okay, that's better than nothing. I thought we were going to get nothing out of that entire salvo. At least we knocked out the heavy laser. Unfortunately, the ion blast is more dangerous to us because now the halberd beam is guaranteed damage. So if we can ionize that, good. We're going for the weapons here. Please knock those systems offline. Perfect. We knocked out exactly what I hoped we would there, getting the disable on the halberd beam. And they are dead. Auto scout is gone. Fantastic. That could have been much worse. Ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 26 scrap. We have to try and turn this thing around still. We're in pretty risky conditions, but... Oh, things are looking better. Things are looking better. Now we have some more firepower with our weapons. We can actually fight two shield enemies a little bit more effectively. I'd love to upgrade our doors, but for now I'm going to hold on to our money. And we're going to jump over to the exit beacon. Maybe take another jump or two before we have to leave. We're running really low on fuel, though, too. So let's see what happens here. We arrive at a long-range beacon. When the FDL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. A ship refueling station is stationed here. We can buy six fuel for 12 scrap, which we absolutely will. That is a very good purchase for us. Now, there's a store over here, which we're probably not going to go to, because we have nothing we can buy from them, really. We don't have any money to give them. So we're just going to hold on to our stuff, and we're going to jump to the next sector. So what is our options here for sector four? Slug home nebula and abandoned sector. Ooh. Very interesting options. Slug Home Nebula with a slug crew might be interesting. We can bypass a lot of the slug sabotage that way. Abandoned Sector can be good as well, because there's a bunch of cool Lanius events there. I think we're going to go to the Slug Home Nebula, though. We'll have to go to the Abandoned Sector another day. This is a Home Nebula. We do have a slug on board. These are often actually quite valuable, unlike the Uncharted Nebulas, which are not generally as good. So we'll go to the Slug Home Nebula and see if it winds up paying off for us. We'll go somewhere a bit unusual today. Here we go. So, we've arrived here in the Slug Home Nebula. I just noticed we only have 67% oxygen again. I'll have to let that regenerate in a second. Slugs developed on an ocean planet where the ability to telepathically sense another organism was more important than sight. Today, they use this ability to navigate unfettered the depths of the nebulas they inhabit. But yeah, we're going to let our O2 regenerate again, and we'll be back again in a second, because we're probably going to have to turn it off again soon. All right, we're back with full air. Let's see if we can make some more progress here. We have a whole Slug Home Nebula to jump around in. Let's go see what's going on at this beacon, and then we'll keep moving, I suppose. The slugs here use a tactic we hope we never see. They use a remote hacking satellite to sabotage our oxygen production system and then charge fire weapons, hoping to suffocate us out. Well, you know what? It's a good thing we actually uh, stopped for breathing air there, otherwise this would probably kill us. So it's a good thing we didn't let that happen. Also, they have three shield bars, which sucks, but uh, apart from that, the odds of them being able to get that fire beam through our defenses are kind of slim, because they have to be able to hit us with all of them, and that doesn't normally happen. So we have a bit of time here. The only problem is we're on another timer because we have no air. So let's try and deal them some damage quickly here, and then knock out that weapon system. We can try and do some damage quickly. Oh, that's not what I wanted at all. Fire that in there. You keep auto-firing at the shields. There we go. Doing a bit of damage is good. That knocks out the fire beams. Now they really cannot hurt us. The charge ion should knock out their shields in a second. Then we can use the charge laser more uh, wantonly, like so. There we go. Fire that through there. Fire a charge laser into the shields to make sure they don't try and run away in a second. There we go. Fire another charge laser into weapons to keep them distracted. And we'll mini-beam them through there for the kill, I think, right about now. Sorry, Slug Light Cruiser, you made a good effort. We still have 50% oxygen, so it didn't quite work. Slug Ship breaks apart, and we get two fuel, one missile, and 33 scrap out of them. That'll do. We have 66, 63 scrap now, which is not bad. Let's turn the O2 back on, and I guess we keep jumping. We only have 50% oxygen, so I should really wait and see what else happens, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. Let's jump over this way. I don't really feel like going over here. Let's go to the store, see if we can get anything good for 63 scrap. I don't think it's very likely, but maybe we get a better weapon. That would be really nice. A huge slug teleports from nowhere onto the bridge, and before he can open fire, he spread his wares across the helm and is brandishing things at us. 
Well, nope, there's nothing great in there. Shield charge booster is not bad, but of all these options, there's nothing really wonderful. I might take the shield charge booster, though, just because getting that extra survivability, that slight recharge rate increase is quite nice. Honestly, though, I don't think we can really justify it. I wouldn't mind buying sensors or backup battery either, but at the moment, I think we need to keep our money, so we'll buy ourselves all the fuel we can manage, and we're just going to leave. Let's jump over this way and see what these guys want. We spot a rebel ship in the nebula ahead and try and stay off their radar. Let's use our long-range scanners to track them as we move to engage. As soon as they see us, they make a run for it. We squeeze what we can to the malfunctioning sensors and are able to keep track of them long enough to get into firing range. Alright, well, they can hurt us. Odds are they'll be able to get at least one shot in with that mini-beam. We're just going to immediately start spamming the charge ion and hopefully knock out their systems here. There we go. We almost have the charge laser. There's the mini-beam coming in. Oh, it missed. Fantastic. We're really lucky there. All right, let's do some damage here. Fire some shots in. Mini-beam them if we can. No, oh, just barely. That's fine, though. We'll mini-beam through there, which should do some pretty significant damage to their core systems. Knocks up the defense drone. Not that it really matters to us. Core of our damage here comes from our charge lasers, super fast charge speed, and from the mini-beam being able to tear across four rooms on this layout, which is awesome. There we go. Now they're in trouble. Down to only one hell, two hull left, rather. Now they're down to one, and they're basically doomed. They try and surrender, offering us three fuel, a drone part, and 16 scrap. We don't accept their surrender because we want to get a bit more scrap out of them if we can. We're going to mini beam up through there again and charge laser them to death. If they have nobody in the helm still, they're dead. Fantastic. Ripple Rigger goes down. Ship explodes, giving us two fuel, two missiles, and 23 scrap, which is not bad. We have 77 scrap now. Let's jump over here. See if we can get out of here. What's this all about? A slug vessel we encounter here has obviously made a big score and is looking to test its new armaments. They picked the wrong ship to attack. Did they, though? They have a pretty nasty arsenal right there. With the uh, three shield bubbles, the charge ion, and the ion blast, and the pike beam, if they don't get unlucky and miss us a couple times at the start here, we're going to take about a million damage. Also, they have really high evasion, apparently, which means the odds of us not taking a billion damage are also really low. Thankfully, the pike beam first shot missed, so that's good for us. Can we get the mini beam to hurt them? Nope, we can't get enough shots off with the charge, which is bad news. We have no shields left, which means the next pike is definitely going to hurt. Alright, we actually cannot knock down their shields either right now. And we've missed again. Fantastic. I guess we have to charge up the ions a bit longer before we can go for this strategy. They've knocked out our drones and our charge ion, which means we're basically helpless here. We're going to jump on to a different location, jump over this way, and see if we can do something different. Because evidently fighting those guys is a bad move. We detect multiple ships running near, near, at maximum power nearby, but we can't see anything through this thick nebula, so obviously we get closer to investigate. We find a slug cruiser and a rock ship at a standoff, both with weapons armed and ready to fight. We could intervene before this gets out of hand, so let's hail them and see what's wrong. The slug captain explains they upgraded the rock ship's reactor to the thick boulder heads refusing to pay for the work done. The rock captain says the slime balls did a poor job is not worth the agreed upon price. Well, you know what? Let's demand the rock ship paid the agreed upon price. With much grumbling, the rock captain agrees to pay the price. Okay, well, it worked out again. And the slug captain offers a free reactor upgrade for our help. Well, there you go. We got another free reactor upgrade. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how that event normally goes, but I'm not going to complain. Let's move our weapons around there a little bit just to make sure we don't get anything broken at the wrong time. Go fix our drone control. We have 77 scrap to spend if we can find anything else to spend it on. Weapons, I think, are our priority right now, though. Getting level 3 shields would be nice, but getting some more actual firepower instead of just lockdown abilities like the charge ion gives us would be really nice. All right, there we go. The charge laser is really good with only one power. When it's two power, I don't like it very much. But when it's only one, it's hard to go wrong there. Let's jump over here out of the nebula and see if there's anything interesting over here. A ship refueling station can be found here. We can buy six fuel for 12 scrap from them, which we will, because you always take that option, basically, unless you're literally drowning in fuel. It's such a good deal for what it costs. And what do we find over here? The distress call appears to be emanating from a slug ship caught in open space by a Mantis Raider. They contact us on emergency frequencies. Please, we'll give you all we have if you save us. We can just attack the Mantis, we can attack the slugs, or we can just leave. Let's try and save them. We'll attack the Mantis Raider and see what happens. We lo lock onto the Mantis ship and engage. They'll be boarding us in a second with a Mantis. And that should be not too bad. Let's run you into the doors. There we go. Lock them down. Start the venting. And we need the charge laser online, a uh, charge ion online, thank you very much. Let's start locking down those shields with it. They do have a rocket launcher, which is going to probably suck. Hits us in the helm, of course it does, which means now their burst laser Mark III has all of its shots that are guaranteed to hit. Cool, let's fire the charge laser in there. Two hits, good, we're going to mini-beam them for a bit of damage here, because otherwise this is going to suck. 
There we go. Please knock out that laser. No, unfortunately, the big laser stayed online, which means we are going to take a bazillion damage right now. Here it comes. Ow. Of course, it hits the helm again as well, which isn't good news. We're going to close these doors. We're going to let our slug deal with that mantis. We have no uh, clone bay right now, but their crew is dead anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Our mini beam is offline as well, which sucks, because that's our main focus damaged option. Let's fire the charge laser back through there, hopefully turn off that rocket launcher at least. There we go. Do some repairs over there. We can get back in the engines, get some more evasion going. Thank you very much. Now, hopefully, they can't hit us quite as luckily with this salvo. That's more like it. And we're going to fire the charge lasers and knock the rocket launcher off again. Perfect. Turn the mini beam back on because we need one of those. Let's go power up our clone bay in case one of our crew ends up dying here because our crew are pretty low on health and an unlucky hit could easily knock us over. Fire the charge lasers in there again. Perfect. Dealing a bit more damage to that system very slowly. Mini beam is ready now, though, so we should be able to get some real damage in in a second. Here comes the hurt, and they've knocked out our helm again. Cause why not? Cause seriously, this game is gunning for our <laughs> gunning for us so bad. All right, knock them out here. This will kill them because we can use the mini beam now. They are dead. Goodbye, Mantis Scout. You horrible, horrible monstrosity. You, Mantis defeated. We contact the weakened slugged vessel. You see, uh, we are most grateful. But that is, we do not have uh, the liquid assets to reward you at this time. We get one fuel, two missiles, 29 scrap, we're going to murder them. Doesn't look like they can stand much more damage. After a few shots, our ship breaks apart and moving to loot the remains, getting one fuel, one drone part, and 35 scrap. Well, they kind of asked for that. We're tons of damage right now. We're down to only five hull, which is awful. Our crew is badly injured. We have enough to actually spend some money, though. So we're going to upgrade our doors to defend ourselves, so we keep constantly getting boarded. I'd love to buy level three shields, but at the moment, dealing with the boarders is kind of priority, because whenever they come in, our crew is close to death. We have a clone base, we can, re we can revive them, but still... An advanced double automated ship remains stationed near a small mobile space station without functioning sensors. We can't tell what's inside, so let's attack that automated ship to get to the station and see what happens. They got a beam drone, ions, and rockets. Well, this sounds like fun. Let's try and deal some damage here and see what happens. They're sending some ions at us already. Hopefully they miss us, which they did, which is great. We're going to get the charge ion in on them in a second. I guess we might as well fire it now. Rockets are on their way. Hopefully they don't hit anything important. They miss us entirely, which is great news. Fire some more shots at them. Hopefully we can get a mini beam in to knock off that weapon. Good. We're hitting the drone control and the weapons, which isn't going to make a huge difference, but it knocks out the, the, uh, the ion, which is a pretty big deal, actually. And once we can get our charge laser ready, another miss is amazing luck. All right. We're going to charge laser in the weapons, and we're going to go for the mini-beam again. Perfect. Same location. Knock out those weapons and drones. Now they can't hurt us. We only have five hulls, so we have to do our best to make it all count. And now this is a pretty good spot we're in. Knock them out again. Mini-beam through there to keep them locked down. And we should be okay. One weird thing about the charge laser is how long the delay is between the two shots when they're both charged up. Most weapons fire pretty quickly, but the uh, charge laser has a surprisingly long delay between shots. There goes the auto-assault, though. Taken down. Whew, we salvaged 26 scrap from the broken ship. When we investigate the station, we find it was either abandoned or stripped clean and is laid unused for quite some time. We find nothing useful inside. Well, that's no good. There's a store here, though, which is very useful. So let's go there and see if we can get some repairs to make us not on the verge of death, maybe a weapon to make ourselves a bit more powerful. We cautiously approach a slug colony on a huge asteroid. It's a brave person who sets foot in a slug planet, as it can take weeks to get the mucus out of our clothes, but there's business to be done. Ugh, no, they don't. They have a hull repair drone, which is a really easy way to get repairs, and we have lots of drone parts, so we can pretty easily afford them. So I might get that. That's actually pretty nice for keeping us alive. Yeah, okay, buy the hull repair drone. With 35 scrap, we can't really afford to buy anything else, but I will just hold on to the rest of my money. Use the hull repair drone to get us some repairs for cheap, because we have plenty of drone parts we're not using for anything else. Hopefully we get some good numbers out of these guys. We'll repair ourselves up to half hull, then we'll move on. That was only three. That's not so good. Can we get at least far out of one of these guys? One, two, there we go. There's three again. And that's okay. Bad luck again. Can we get at least four repairs out of one of these drone parts? One, two, three. Nope. Wow. Talk about bad luck. We'll do one more. And we'll have dr repairs whenever we want them now. Two. Will you give us more than three times repairs? Okay, good. At least one guy gave us more than three. He's giving us five. Okay, that's good. At least one of them gave us a better value. There we go. Let's keep jumping. We have a couple more beacons here we can afford to go to before we run out of time completely and have to get to that exit. So, we'll see what we can acquire from them first. A slug transport ship is stationed at this beacon with a military escort. They message us saying, We have been waiting for a customer for ages. Care to see our wares? 
Well, sure, let's ask to see the goods. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to explain some ground rules of our transaction. These are dangerous times, yes. Well, we use our slug crew member to see if he senses someone aboard the ship. We investigate. Looks like the merchant's trying to stall us while someone teleported on board. We catch him before he can finish, and he teleports away, and we immediately prepare for battle. Well, you jerks. They weren't expecting us to have a slug, now were you? So, let's get the charge ion ready to go. Fire some shots in there. I guess we'll let it charge up the two, two charges, because it doesn't make much of a difference firing it before then anyway. Go! They might be able to hit us with that, and of course they do, hitting us directly in the weapons like jerks. Let's hit them in the weapons then in retaliation. We missed them, which is just our luck. Cool. Let's go do some repairs then, because otherwise this is going to keep hurting. There we go. Now they can't do anything about it. We're hitting the weapons quickly, hopefully knocking out one of those systems. There we go. This is a dangerous weapon. is actually offline, so that's better than nothing. Charge laser in there again. Mini beams back online, so let's recharge that. Get our crew ready to go. Okay. We have to keep locking down that weapon system now, because otherwise we're going to be in for a world of hurt while our shields are ionized. Alright, charge laser, go, mini beam, you're going to fire right through there. And unfortunately we missed the shot there, so we might actually, yep, might actually get blocked there by the shields as they regenerate. Bad luck with the charge ion, please let us regenerate our shields before you fire, you jerks. Alright, charge lasers are almost ready to go, we're going to fire again for the weapons, hopefully knock out that system again. Perfect, now they can't fire that, even though it was almost fully charged, which is great for us. Deal some more damage. There we go. They're recharging it again, but we should be okay now. Charge ion should keep locking them down as long as we don't start missing again. Charge laser can get through the shields, and then we can hopefully hit them with a the mini-beam. Perfect. Knock out their helm completely, do some more weapon damage. With three crew on there, it's going to take them a long time to... It's not going to take them very long to get it repaired, but we'll have to do what we can in the meantime. Fire the charge laser in there again. We missed, unfortunately, but the mini-beam is free to fire. They got a damage on us, but we're okay here. They say that we have vested them, and they offer us what's in their stores in exchange for their lives. We will not accept their surrender, even though we're in the Slug Home Nebula, which means this is the only way to get the Slug event. We're not going to risk it. Ship explodes, giving us a missile, a drone part, and 23 scrap. Often you get nothing from them or a pretty terrible reward, so we're just going to take some guaranteed uh, income instead. Now, we don't have a whole lot of options here. We do have a bit of time, though, before we run out of space entirely. So we're probably going to go both of the, all three of these sectors. We should go, like, one, two, three, and then we should be okay. So it'll be one, two, then a bigger jump. Hmm, I don't know. That might be really stupid. we do it anyway, though. Here we go! If you have to fight a whole arsenal at the exit, we'll have to see what happens. There are a few more vicious beasts in the galaxy than the slug with his back to the wall. The faltering ship armed with fire weapons uses a remote hacking tool to try and disable our doors and plans to burn us out. Well, at least they're only going for the doors this time. Like I guess they have fire bombs then, and interestingly enough, they have a slug locked in the engine's room. There's no way in there, dude. <laughs> How did you get in? Alright, we're going to go for the charge ion soon. They do have a halberd ion blast combo again, though, which is going to suck if they manage to get that off. So let's charge up the charge ion to two attacks and immediately fire it. We need to knock out those weapon systems pronto. Get the charge laser in there. Please don't dodge me. Fantastic. We're going to fire up through the O2, I think. Just to be mean. No, we're not. We're going to go through the, the helm. We want to try and reduce that evasion if at all possible. There we go. Ion Blast is now offline, so the odds of them being able to get the halberd beam through are pretty slim. There we go. Looks like that bomb got disabled right as it was about to fire, so that's convenient for us. There's nobody on the helm anymore, which means that their evasion chance is certainly reduced. So we'll fire another charge laser in there. There we go, and mini-beam them through the core of the ship again to make sure that they can't use their combo as easily. Unfortunately, it's not going quite as easily as I'd hoped, but this damage should do it. There we go, now they can't do this with a combo. We could try and suffocate them if we really wanted, but I think it like, seems to me like it's a bit of a dangerous idea when we know that their weapons are pretty powerful, so we're just going to knock them out and kill the Slug Scout. There we go. Slug ship breaks apart and we gather ourselves a fuel drone part and 24 scrap and systems return to normal. Let's go repair our drone controls. We can use our hull repair if we need it. We have 82 scrap still to spend. I'm probably going to go for those level 3 shields soon because we don't have many other options at the moment anyway. And then we'll do what else we have to do. Alright. I think we're perfectly fine here. Let's make it to this jump and then hopefully we don't get overrun before we get to the exit. It could very well happen though. We receive a message from a nearby ship. Looks like our intelligence was correct. Sleeking through the clouds with the slugs. No one can hide from the rebellion. Well, they've got all kinds of things coming at us. Hacking in our doors, that's fine. Missiles, beam drones, lasers are fine. As long as the missile doesn't hit our shields and then they get really lucky with everything else. The problem, though, is this sucker. He's going to make this really irritating for us. Also, our game was super laggy there for a second. That was weird. Let's go for the shields. And we're also going to fire the charge laser at them, because, whoop, this is going to hit us. All right, so hopefully it doesn't hit anything important. We're going to aim for the drone control with this first shot, I think. 
There we go. And we can mini beam through them now, so that's perfect. We're gonna mini beam weapons and drones. Hopefully knocking out the defense drone, but I don't know how likely that is. Nope, we knocked out the beam drone, which isn't quite as good, but that's okay. We'll vent out these doors to put out those fires a bit more quickly. Unfortunately, they can lock down our charge ion, so we can't just spam it at them. Thankfully for us, though, their missile's offline, so that's better than nothing. We'll save up for, for the full charge ion so we can get more shots off with more likelihood of actually disabling them. And... Here we go. Charge ion. Go for it. Charge laser. Go for it. Alright, they shot most of it down, but we can still get the beam drone in there, so we're going to. This time we're going to go for a better target, hit them for four rooms. If they decide to try and run away, which they just did, we're going to be in for a bit of trouble here, because we have to wait for our full charge time to be able to even hurt them. But hopefully, they continue to be unlucky. Uh-oh, missile coming in. Oh, thank goodness it missed us. They're probably going to get another shot at us, though, before we can do too much else to them, and the odds of us being able to block them completely here are pretty slim. Here goes the charge ion again. We're going to fire it at the shields again. Part of the charge laser as well. Should have aimed that for the weapons, but doesn't really matter. Their FTL is delayed, but they're gonna die here. We got all our damage in, and they try and surrender. We do not accept their surrender. They are dead. They hit us in the clone base for more damage, but they died first anyway. Ship explodes, giving us one fuel, one missile, and 21 scrap. So that's not bad, but not great either. Let's go do some repairs, because we need to again. And then we can move on. 103 scrap isn't great, but it is enough to buy ourselves a next level of shield protection, so we might want to do that before we do too much else here. We should check and see if we can actually make it out of here alive. Oh, plenty of time. I don't know why I thought we wouldn't be able to. Don't know why I thought we wouldn't be able to. All right. Get them repairs done on the drone control. We might actually give ourselves a brief little heal here because we are getting a little bit low on hull, and we have plenty of drone parts still to use. There's no reason not to take advantage of this thing now that we've got it. So hull repair drone, give us some heals. One. How many are we going to you? Two. Give us at least four, please. Three. Oh my goodness, our luck is terrible with these drones. This is the last one we're going to take, no matter how many it gives us. One, two, come on, at least four. Three. And there's another one. Good. Okay, we got at least four out of this one, too. Good enough. Good enough. So, we could go for another shield bar, which is probably a pretty good option. I kind of want to save our money for the next sector, though, and see if we can get a better weapon over there, something else to give us some more firepower, because at the moment we're pretty limited still. We've arrived here at the Long Range Beacon, Leaf Field Drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector, and we have to find what appears to be a colonized moon, however scans show it's been abandoned. Let's examine the station nearby. The station's in disarray. We'll find a cloning bay, partially intact, but nothing else seems to be functioning. Let's search for a surviving DNA bank. While the cloning faci facilities are no longer functioning, we find someone was in queue to be cloned. We transfer their data to our clone bay, and after a time, their body is rebuilt. The clone is extremely confused, but seems to accept their new situation. With no other options, the clone offers to work on our ship for a time. Welcome aboard, friend. Alright, we got ourselves a NG out of that. That's interesting, I've never seen that event before. Alright, you're working on shields now, fairy. Although we, re need, we need to rename you to something more appropriate. You are going to be Sheriff, I think. No, you're going to be Varmint. <laughs> you'll be Varmint, there you go. Fantastic, welcome aboard, Varmint. So... That'll be that. Let's jump out of here to the next sector. Good thing we did, too. We have just barely enough time. Next sector, we have a slug-controlled nebula or a pirate-controlled sector. I think we're going to go pirate-controlled just because we just did a nebula. And uh, only so many slugs I can handle in one day. So a pirate-controlled nebula it is for sector 5. We actually have a pretty decent ship here. I mean, it's, it's pretty weak as far as weapons are going, and it's pretty underpowerful as far as shields are at this point in the game. But still, we're not dead yet, which is pretty incredible. A few years ago, this region was bustling with trade activity. Now it's overrun with bandits and marauders. We should tread lightly here. Undoubtedly we should. This is definitely going to be troublesome for us. But for now, we're going to end this episode here. Thank you all very much for watching. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing some FTL Advanced Edition here in the VSS High Noon, our stealth cruiser Type C. It has been a bit of a disaster so far, but we're kind of on a better better footing now, even though I would say it's a good footing. Hopefully we can keep turning this around and make ourselves a decent victory with a stealth Type C. That would be pretty fantastic. For now, though, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye